from history. Welcome to Weirdos from History, where we delve into the dubious deeds and eccentric exploits of history's most peculiar personalities. Today, we take a tantalizing trip through the life of Roman von Ungern Sternberg, a man whose moniker, the Mad Baron, was no mere metaphor. Buckle up, because this Baltic Baron's biography blends brutality, Buddhism, and bizarre behavior in one bewildering bundle. Born on January 10th, 1886, in Graz, Austria, Hungary, Roman von Ungern Sternberg was destined to be more than just a mouthful of aristocratic syllables. Young Roman, a Baltic German by blood, and a future nightmare by nature, moved to Reval, modern Tallinn, in 1888. Picture a pint-sized psychopath who excelled in animal cruelty. Young Roman once tried to strangle his cousin's pet owl. Yes, the boy had a knack for necking nocturnal birds. In 1891, Roman's parents divorced, and his mother remarried a Baltic German nobleman. If that wasn't enough family drama, add Roman's unruly nature to the mix. By 1902, after a series of scandalous skirmishes and brawls, he was booted out of the Nicholas I gymnasium in Rival. Clearly, Roman was more rambunctious than regal, proving to be a prodigy of perturbation rather than propriety. Fast forward to the Russo-Japanese War of 1904 to 1905, where Roman, now a cadet, was sent to the Far East. One would think war might temper his temper, but no. Our future baron bounced around, battling his own officers just as fiercely as he did the Japanese. A war medal in one hand and a court-martial sentence in the other, he was the epitome of paradoxical patriotism. By 1908, Roman had developed an unhealthy obsession with the occult and Buddhism, a peculiar penchant for a man of his lineage. His cousin, Count Hermann von Keiseling, described him as metaphysically gifted, a euphemism for batty as a belfry. Roman believed he could read minds and was convinced he was the reincarnation of Genghis Khan, a conviction he shared with anyone who'd listen or couldn't escape. With World War I dawning in 1914, Roman re-enlisted and was stationed on the Austro-Hungarian frontier. He earned accolades for his audacious actions, charging headfirst into combat with the elan of a man who seemed invincible or merely indifferent to mortality. Wounded multiple times, it was as though bullets bounced off his bravado. The Russian Revolution of 1917 shattered his imperial idol. Roman joined the White Army, sworn enemies of the Bolsheviks. It was here that he met Cossack Captain Grigory Semyonov, a kindred spirit in chaos. Together, they assembled a motley militia of Cossacks, Mongols, and other cavalry people, all primed to put the mad in Mad Baron. Now, if you think Roman's life was already a roller coaster, the Russian Civil War was about to turn it into a full-blown circus. By 1920, Roman and his ragtag regiment were marauding through Siberia, plundering trains and terrorizing towns. Forget Robin Hood, this was a reign of terror conducted with the ruthlessness of a rogue warlord. In August 1920, Roman turned his sights on Mongolia, a land he dreamt of transforming into a monarchic utopia. He led his Asiatic cavalry division into Urga, now Ulaanbaatar, employing deceit and daring to outmaneuver Chinese forces. His tactics included lighting fires on hills to feign a larger force and staging supernatural spectacles to spook his foes. And it was psychological warfare with a pyrotechnic twist. After capturing Urga in February 1921, Roman restored the Bod Khan to the throne, positioning himself as a protector of Mongolian monarchy, but power perhaps went to his already swollen head. He declared himself the divine incarnation of Jamsaran, the Tibetan god of war, a title so grandiose it almost eclipsed his brutal behavior. Roman's regime, albeit the short-lived, was a ruthless reign of retaliatory rampage. He imposed draconian discipline on his own men and enacted pogroms against Jews, whom he despised with a fanatical fervor. His methods of maintaining order were so medieval they made Game of Thrones look like a Disney movie. In June 1921, Roman's luck ran out. The Bolsheviks, undoubtedly peeved by his persistent pestilence, launched an invasion of Mongolia. But Roman's forces, outgunned and outnumbered, were decimated. 
Retreating to Siberia, Romans' dreams of a Mongolian empire dissolved faster than a sugar cube in vodka. On August 20th, 1921, Roman was captured by Red Army forces. His trial, a six-hour spectacle of Soviet efficiency, ended with his execution on September 15th, 1921. True to form, Roman met his end with defiant disdain, a scowl on his scarred face as he faced the firing squad. Roman von Ungern Sternberg's life was a chaotic cocktail of cruelty, charisma and craziness, each ingredient contributing to his infamous legacy. His bizarre blend of brutality and Buddhism, seasoned with a dash of divine delusion, ensured his place in the annals of history as one of its most fascinating freaks. Thanks for tuning into Weirdos from History. If you enjoyed this jaunt through the life of Roman von Ungern Sternberg, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Until next time, keep your historical oddities odd and your reality checks frequent.